just thank God for we are blessed and favored of God and thank him for all that he has done and all that he continues to do. Praise God. And we thank him tonight for being able to look into his word and to be able to see the mind of God and uh, our purpose and our assignment in him is, is in his word. And we thank God for his, uh, his precious word. The Bible tells us, and Jesus said to himself, that man shall not live by bread alone, but out of every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And we just thank the Lord tonight, but we truly seek him tonight for a word that is coming from his mouth. He may use my mouth, but but the word we wanted, wanted to come from him and him alone. So we thank God tonight. We're going to uh, read the scripture tonight in uh, St. John um, 23 and 24. And it says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Father God, we thank you tonight for being all that you are. We thank you for being our heavenly father. We thank you, Father God, for all things tonight, for you have been good to us. We can never, ever thank you for the love that you bestowed upon us. You gave your precious son we, you gave the best that you had. And we thank you tonight, Lord God. You gave it, gave him for our sin, for our shame, Lord. Undeserving as we were, you manifested your love toward us. And we thank you today for that great love, that great love. We thank you for it's a love that passes all understanding. But we thank you tonight for just loving us. We thank you, Father God, for for the things that you continue to do for us, Lord God. You touch us, Lord, as we go to and fro and you keep us, keep our hearts and keep our minds, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, Lord God, in your will tonight. For Lord, we seek more of it, Lord God. We desire more and more of you, Lord God. That's what we need. That's what we need, that's what we need above all things, above all the things that we may see. And all the things that may be before us, Lord God, hallelujah, we need you more than anything else. Your word has said that, that now is the hour has come, Lord God. Now is the time that you're seeking the true worshiper. Those are going to worship you in truth. Those are going to worship you in spirit, Lord God. That's what you seek. We want to be those people tonight, Lord God. We want to be those worshipers tonight. We want to be those that are standing on your truths, Lord God upholding your bloodstained banner, letting your word be our standard, Lord God, our standard that's before us, our standard that we uphold, Lord God, in a godless world, Lord God, in a world where men have, have turned to, to themselves, Lord God, and have turned to the lust of their flesh, Lord God. Father, we hold up the, your truth tonight, Lord God. And Father, we just say that you can ask you tonight that you continue to empower us Continue to give us what we need, that we can go forth as your witnesses, as your ambassadors in this world, telling men about your goodness, telling men about your truth, with no fear, no doubt, Lord God, but going, for, going forth in you with power and glory. We thank you tonight for all things. We just ask right now that you touch every heart and every mind that might be listening tonight. Father, you know our needs, Lord God. We bring everything, we lay everything at your feet tonight. Everything, every situation, every circumstance, Lord, we lay it at your feet. Way before your throne, where you said we can come boldly now to the throne of grace, a place where we can receive mercy and help. Our dependence, our faith, our confidence is in you tonight. Lord, we thank you for just being all that you are. Just bless us and keep us right now, Father. And we'll continually praise you for we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you praise, praise, glory, and honor tonight. Amen and amen. We praise God tonight. Our word says, the word said tonight that God is looking for those that's going to worship him. 
So in St. John 4, 23, I'm going to read it again. He said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they, they that worship him must, must worship him in spirit and truth. He said, we're going to praise God. We're going to worship God. We're going to give God to give God glory. He said, the only way we can do it is in spirit and truth. Praise the Lord in spirit and truth. That's what God, that's the Bible says that Jesus said it himself. He said, this is who God is looking for. Those are going to worship him the way God wants to be worshiped. Praise God the way God wants to be praised. And we thank him tonight for just being all that he is. And God, what's so wonderful about God? He, he, tells us what he desires. He tells us what he wants from us. He, he informs us uh, through revelation of his will. Praise God. He's given us his precious word, his holy book, praise the Lord, that speaks to us and tells us what God desires, what God wants. And that's why we were talking about uh, a few weeks ago about the importance of studying and continue to study the word and getting the word in our heart get in the word in our mind, praise God. This, this is so important, praise God. We have to understand that we can't be true worshipers. We can't be prayer worshipers, praise God. We can't be those that are living for God and serving God the way he wants if we're not allowing this word to be in our heart. So we have to allow his word to be sown in our hearts. We have to, we have to want, we should desire God's word to be sown in our heart. And it, and it has to be cultivated by him, praise the Lord. God cultivates this word through faith. He, he cultivates his word, his word through patience. Praise God. He cultivates it so we are able to walk and stand and withstand and doing all to stand in these last days. We said last week, if we're going to move to the next, next level, praise God, it must begin on the inside. God has to do an inside work on us. If we're going to be those that's going to be in true service unto God, and this is what I'm talking about, for this month is being in true service with God, being in true service with God, true service. He's looking for those who gonna worship him how in spirit and truth, those are gonna be in true service. I'm not talking about service. We go to a church service and we have a service in the church and we do certain things. I'm talking about serving him, serving him in spirit and in truth. We're serving him as those faithful servants, praise the Lord, that he desires. Those faithful servants that he desires. We we were talking about the, the need to be those those faithful servants in, in 1 Corinthians 4, <clears throat> 4, 4, 1. And he says to us here in 4 and 1 of 1 Corinthians, he let a man so account of us or consider us as of the ministers or the servants of Christ. He said, and stewards of the mysteries of God. He said, let a man so, let men consider us as those that are servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. We, we talked about, we said a steward was, was one, an attendant or a helper or one who assists his master. Praise God. One who, who, who attends to the things of his master. One that, that helps his master. One who's an assistant, praise the Lord, to, to his master. So he tells us here that we have to be what? Those good stewards of the mysteries of God. God has given us something that is more important than anything else. He's given us his precious word. And we have to understand and know that we've got to be good stewards over this word, good stewards over his truth. He says in the second chapter, second verse, he says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. He said, now, what is a steward? A steward, if we're going to be good stewards, what do we have to be? Faithful. You cannot be a good steward to God if you don't have faith. You cannot serve God. You cannot serve God righteously. You cannot be that faithful steward without having faith. Praise God. That's the bottom line. If we're going to serve God, we're going to worship God, we have to believe him. Isn't that right? Isn't that what the Bible tells us in, in Hebrews 11 and 6? He that cometh to God must believe. He that cometh to God must believe that what God is. 
He that cometh to God, he, he's got to believe that God is everything. If I'm going to be in true service to God, if I'm going to be a true servant to God, I've got to believe that God is everything that I need tonight. He's everything that I need. You got to believe in your heart and know in your mind that you don't need anything else but him. He's all, all you need. If you're looking for something else, you're in trouble. But he's all you need. It says in Colossians 2, Colossians 2 and 10 says, and ye are complete in him. He said, what? I'm complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers. He's the head of every principality, every power. All everything that drives or rises up, rise, brings itself up in authority of, of God, He is the head of all things. So we got to understand that that if you've got Christ tonight and you're living for Him tonight, you are complete in Him. You are filled by Him. You are kept by Him. Praise the Lord. Believers are filled. Believers are kept by Him. He's given His Spirit. Praise the Lord to keep us, to keep our minds and our hearts. And he will meet our, meet our spiritual need. He will meet the needs, praise God, in our life. He say, won't withhold any good thing from us. Whatever we need, whatever we need, God is able to meet that need. That's why Paul says, my God shall supply. My God, who? My God shall supply all, all my needs. Because he found himself, he found his completeness where? In God. He found his completeness in serving God. So we got to understand something. We got to be encouraged and we got to stand in confidence, knowing that our God is able to keep that which we commit. That confidence is important. We're going to be faithful believers. Faith, we're going to be worshipers. That we got to have, we got to stand fast in the confidence of knowing that God is able to keep me. God is able to provide for me. God is able to make a way for me. That's why this study and learning of him and finding out who he is and, and, and getting him in your spirit and getting him in your heart is so important. Paul says in uh, Philippians 1, he says in 1 and 6, he said, being confident of this very thing. He said, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work where? In you. We'll what? We'll perform it. We'll complete it until he, he's going to keep you. He's going to perform. He's going to do the things in you that, that, that he desires, that he wants. He will perform it. He will finish it. That's why we got to continue to work. We got to continue to do the will of God, continue to follow his divine plan for our life. Follow his divine plan for our lives. He said, being confident of this very thing, he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He said, God knows how to, to perform it. God knows how to, to manifest and bring forth the things in your life that he wants. That's why it's a need for confidence. Look at Hebrews 10 and 36. <clears throat> it says, for ye have need of patience, that after he has done the will, after you have done the will of God, you might receive what? The promises. He said, after you have done the will of God. What do I have to do? The will of God. 35, 35, just going up to 35 says, cast not away therefore your confidence. Don't cast away your confidence. Hold on. Hold on to what God has said. Hold on to the trust that you have in him. That Whatever things may be shaking and quaking and doing things and happening in your life right now, things may be happening in this world that we live in and we don't understand. Praise the Lord. It doesn't make sense. We see leadership twisted and all things around us that's happening. We have, we have sickness all around us, praise God. But you would, but he said we, we got need of confidence. Because if you hold fast to your confidence in God and what God is able to do, he said, that's a great recompense of reward. If we hold fast, if we be steadfast, for you got a need to be patient, a, a patient, a need to endure. We have to, we have, to have a mindset to say, I'm going to endure. I got to keep my confidence. 
What is confidence? Confidence is trust. Confidence is reliance. Confidence is boldness. It's boldness, a state of trust, our intimacy. It's a state of trust, our intimacy. That's one thing that's so important because that, that intimacy, because if we love God, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That intimacy is important. That relationship is important because, because we love him and we want to be what he's called us to be. We want God to, to, to work and to use us. We're going to stay confident in what God has called us to do. It's so important to, to do this, to stand in confidence of what God said. The quality of confidence is necessary. Because when we have that quality of confidence and we stand in the confidence of God, God, God will lead us to the things that are necessary for our life. So we have to have, we have to stand and trust this God that is eternal. Trust this God that is eternal. This God that sees all, this God that knows all. So we have to be what? Those stewards. Those stewards that are standing in God. Those stewards, praise God, that are standing faithful. God is looking for those who are going to worship him how? In spirit and in truth. Listen, who said that? Jesus. That's who God is looking for. God is looking for those who are going to worship him in spirit and truth. That is so necessary, praise God, that we stand in, in the faith that God has desired for us. Praise the Lord. And be strong in him. Be strong in him, regardless of what, what's happening around us, regardless of what's going on. Being strong in him. First Peter 4, and 1 says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, he says, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to what? To the will of God. We, we got to live according to what? The will of God. We just said in this question, group, living according to the will, what the, God's will is, what God's desire is, what God's purpose is for my life. What's God's will? God's purpose for me. God has an assignment. I'm saying we're complete because people are, even in the body of Christ, are still trying to find out what they, what, who they are. Not in Christ, but in this world. Where do I fit? Who am I? What should I do? That's why I'm saying this intimacy with Christ is so important because God begins to show you all those things. God begins to show you your value. God begins to show you who, who you are and what you are, and what he wants from you. Because you have been designed, you have been divi divinely designed by God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, the, uh, Psalms 139 says. You've been fearfully and wonderfully made by, by this God that loves you. And God has a desire for your life. That's why he says here that that, that we have to cease from sin, cease from anything that would cause us not to walk in his will. He says, for the time past our life may, su may suffice us to have wrought the will of Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling, uh, banqueting, and, a, and abominable adultery, when they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same ex excess of riot. Speaking evil of you. But see, he said, we didn't stop doing it. We stopped running it and people think it's strange. I'm not trying to fit in to the mode of the world or the mode of society. I see people everywhere, people all over the place trying to be different. Different in many different, many ways. They, they may change their hairstyle. They may put tattoos. They may do a whole lot of things to, to, to just be separate and be different. We should not be ashamed to live according to what God desires from us and God wants from us. We have to be those that are ministering, ministering his word and truth and righteousness. Look what he says in, 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 a, in 1 Peter 4 and 10. He says that every man has received the gift even so minister the same one to another. 
as as good stewards he's of the of the manifold grace of god he said minister as what as those that are manifesting the grace the grace of god going minister in grace Ministering the ability, the divine ability that God has given us and bring forth his word and his truth in grace. This is what's important. He said, if any man speak, let him speak as oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God who giveth. Who gives it? God. God gives us the ability that that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever, amen. He said, we do it in the glory of God. We do it through God who gives us the ability so that Jesus can get the praise, can Jesus can get the glory because Jesus has the dominion and the power. Let him do it. Let him do it as of the ability which God give us. God, give us the ability to do your will. Give us the ability, give us the power that we need to do your will. We desire it right now. We got, you got to desire it right now. We can't compromise. Don't compromise your, 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 your convictions. Don't move away from the things that God has called you to do. You got to get convictions. I talked about once before about having core convictions. That means that's convictions that's coming from the heart. That's convictions that's coming from the down deep core convictions that I, don't, that I don't allow anybody to move me away from what thus says the Lord. I'm going to stand and I'm going to withstand and I'm going to do all to stand. See, that's powerful. I've got to speak that. I got to be willing to stand on those things and know that my God can keep that which I commit. We said a few minutes ago, faith. We got to be what kind of stewards? Faithful stewards. I gotta be a, a faithful steward. I gotta be faithful to God, faithful to his will and hold fast to my confidence because this God that has promised me all these things, this God is able to do what he has said. He'll keep me, he'll keep my commitment. He'll keep my love because I have a desire to do what God has called me to do. You gotta have that desire, man. And it's got to be burning in you. It's got to be burning in you. Look what he says in, in, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. He says, in the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly. Paul said, and I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 24 says, faithful is he that what call you. He said, I'm praying that God keeps your spirit, your soul, and your body. Your spirit, your soul, your body. He said, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And look, he said, faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. God is able to keep you. He's able to keep you in his will. If we have a mind to want to be what kept, see, it, it, it's up to us to make that decision. If we're going to be faithful, if we're going to be steadfast, if we're going to hold fast to confidence, God said, I have no problem, no problem in keeping you. I have no problem in taking care of you. I have no problem in providing for you. God didn't have no problem doing that. He had no problem. When he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, God had no problem with taking care of them and providing for them. All he asked from them was that they be faithful, that they love him, that they keep his commandments. That was the thing that he asked, that you love me, that you keep my commandments, you walk in my ways. This is what he desired. He said, you keep this, I'm going to take you into a land, this land that I said that's flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to make ways for you. I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. God was saying this to them through his servant. He was saying this to them through his servant. God is faithful and God will be faithful to keeping up, to the keeping of us and watching over us. But listen, we can't compromise. 
Don't compromise with the things of the enemy. Don't compromise with the things around you. I said before, you need those core convictions. You got to have the core conviction like Daniel had. Daniel didn't compromise. You know the story of Daniel. Daniel won. We get a chance to read it. Daniel didn't compromise. Daniel held fast to his conviction. Daniel held fast to his love for God. He didn't compromise. He refused the king's meat, didn't he? He refused to be indoctrinated, even through, uh, even though everyone else was, was eating out of fear, even though everyone else was doing things. David, Daniel refused to take of the king's table. He refused to take of the things of the world. He refused it, even though he was the, the position that he was in, that he could that that he could lose his life. He, he refused to 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 uh, uh to violate himself. He refused the king's meat. You gotta understand, the enemy is always trying to cause us to do things out of fear. Always trying to get us to do things out of fear. Always trying to cause us to move and turn, turn away from God and turn away from the things of God out of fear. They said, the study shows that there's over 2,000 fears. There's over 2,000 fears. But he said, we are born with only two fears. The fear of falling and loud noises. All the other fears are taught as babies fear of falling and loud noises but all other fears are taught we cannot let fear move us from our calling we cannot let fear come and move us from the things that god has promised us what did paul tell timothy god has not given you what the spirit of fear people love that they got plaques they got all kind of things everywhere on their wall and cars and, and everywhere else god god is not god has not given us the spirit of fear but yet we still fear Yet we still fear. It's not enough to have things hanging around. And sometimes people say, I'm gonna hang this on the wall, I'm gonna put it in a certain place so I can remember it, uh, so I can see it. You know where it needs to really be? In our heart. We need to get it in our heart. That's what God wants it. God wants it in our heart. God wants it in our spirit. So when it so when it rises up, we don't have a we we don't get to the plaque and we don't get to the scripture, but it's in our heart. For God has not given us, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a what? Sound mind. Power and love and a mind that is sound. With everything else crazy, you you can be you're standing you can be standing right now in a place of soundness. You don't get caught up in the crazy. You don't get caught up in the chaos. You don't get caught up in the confusion. Because you know what you're 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 a servant of the king. You're a servant of the king. And you're trusting in the things of him. You're trusting the things of the king. So God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of a sound mind. Paul was encouraging this man of God, this, this, this young Timothy, who now was, was going to begin to take on his hands, begin to move in the things of God. Look what he says in, in the sixth verse. He says, where if I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up, he said, the gift of God, which is in thee. He said, by putting on my hands. In other words, you're taking on the work. You're beginning to, you're going to have to go forth now because I'm thinking to go off the scene. And you have to go forth and, 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 and minister this word and carry forth this truth. He says, so he, he tells him, he says in eighth verse, he said, but be not thou therefore ashamed of, your, of the testimony of your, of your Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God. He said, what? Be a partaker of the afflictions. And that's a lot of times that causes us to fear, causes us to to move away from our work and our service, uh, service unto God because trouble, because affliction, because sometimes this gets too hard. We got to deal with this and we got to deal with that. 
That's why we said it's a warfare. It's a warfare. This is a spiritual warfare. But God is able to keep you because he says who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. He said he called us for his purpose. He called us for his will. Praise the Lord. And listen to me, we got work to do. We got an assignment. God is saying it's here, it's before you. We have to decide and make up in our minds, we're gonna work his work while there's day. We're gonna occupy until he comes. Thank you, Lord. We praise God tonight. I hope something has been said to help you and to encourage you. We're gonna pray at this time. Merciful Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your keeping power, Lord God. We thank you for you have called us. You have saved us. You have called us with a holy calling. You have been called according to your purpose and grace. We thank you tonight. Touch each and every, touch each and every heart that we can be those faithful stewards, those that you're calling for in these last and evil days that we'll worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray tonight. And we give you praise, we give you honor. Hallelujah. And we give you the glory. God bless you to God bless you tonight. Pastor the Lord loves you. God bless you. You are good, you are kind, you are more than these. Lost for words, trying to describe you. Elohim, Elohim. I'll say it we the greatness is all I see. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. Cause you have a track record of It's time.